Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I'm here to help you finish your Christmas shopping list and let everyone else over there stiff arm their competition while trying to fight off that trip to fan on Turkey Night. Now, what we did was we partnered with Rochester Sports Autographs, the largest JSA authenticated autograph distributor in the United States, where you can get up to 75% off over 30,000 autographed sports collectibles during this holiday season. They have something for everyone. But how is RSA able to offer such great deals on JSA authentication, you ask? Well, they do this by making deals directly with athletes so there are no extra markups, and they choose to then pass that savings on to you, the customer. Now, all orders from Rochester Sports Autographs are top quality and shipped to your door with top authentication and a money-back guarantee. But hurry up because customers are so stark raving mad for RSA that memorabilia sells out daily. All you have to do is head over to shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. Again, that's shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. So don't wait to bring home your favorites and own a piece of sports history for you and the loved ones on your shopping list this holiday season. Now it's time to take a sports break. A look at sports history on a daily basis. Hello, my friends of sports history. This is Darren Hayes of JerseyDispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your place for all things great in sports history. And welcome to your sports break for this December 2nd, as we're going to talk about some great events that have happened in sports history, the people that performed them, uniform numbers that they wore. Before we do, let's make sure you know how to give us feedback. We love to hear your feedback. Pigskindispatch at gmail.com is the best way to do it. Or you can DM us on Facebook at the Pigskin Dispatch or Twitter, Pigskin Dispatch. Real easy to do. Now those uniform numbers for December 2nd we'll talk about. There is a plethora of them. So hold back, buckle up your seatbelt. Our uniform numbers for today are 22, 32, 6, 14, 35, 16, 6, 15, 24, 7, 34, 43, 57, 13, 11, 10, 9, 19, and number 15. That's a mouthful, and we've got a lot to talk about. So we'll start off in the year 1887, the 2nd of December, International Baseball League. They disbanded, and teams in Syracuse, Toronto, Hamilton, and Buffalo all formed the International Association. And those in Newark, Jersey City, Wilkes-Barre, and Scranton become the Central League. December 2nd, 1907, the Association of Football Players and Trainers Union, English Professional Football Players Association, we're talking soccer here, European football, is formed by Charlie Roberts and Billy Meredith in Manchester, England. The year's 1909, December 2nd, National Hockey Association, NHA, is formed by, in Montreal, the original members include the Montreal Wanderers and the Montreal Canadiens becomes the NHL after some NHA teams leave due to ownership disagreements and create their own league. We talked about that anniversary yesterday uh, with the Montreal Canadiens joining the NHL. Uh, December 2nd, 1928, the St. Louis Cardinals future Baseball Hall of Fame first baseman Jim Bottomley was voted as the National League's most valuable player. December 2nd, 1944, the 10th Heisman Trophy Award was given to Ohio State quarterback number 22, Les Horvath. You can learn more about uh, Les Horvath in our next Heisman winner who won in 1947 the 13th, uh, the quarterback of Notre Dame, Johnny Lujak, number 32. Both those gentlemen, Les Horvath, Johnny Lujak, we have some great articles over on Pigskin Dispatch. Just put their names into the search box up in the upper right-hand corner. You'll see a whole bunch of stuff come up for them. December 2nd, 1948, after one of the best seasons in baseball history, the St. Louis Cardinals utility man number six, Stan Musial, was named the National League Most Valuable Player. He led the National League in batting average with a 365, runs with 135, runs batted in 131, 230 hits, 46 doubles, 18 triples, and his slugging percentage was 702 with 39 home runs. That's a pretty successful season for Stan Musial. December 2nd, 1951, future Pro Football Hall of Fame wide receiver Don Hudson has his number 14 jersey retired 
by the Green Bay Packers. It's the first number retired in franchise history, and what a great history that franchise has had. December 2nd, 1952, the 18th Heisman Trophy Award was won by Oklahoma halfback number 35, Billy Vessels. December 2nd, 1957, at the NFL Draft, Rice quarterback King Hill was king of the hill that day as he was the number one pick by the Chicago Cardinals and he wore number 16 with the Redbirds up there in Chicago. December 2nd, 1958, the 1959 NFL Draft, Randy Duncan, the quarterback from the University of Iowa, was the number one pick by the Green Bay Packers. Now he wore number 15 as a member of the Dallas Texans in 1961. Not sure that I can see where he played with the Packers at all. First uh, show up of him is uh, on Sports Reference, um, Pro Football Reference, I'm sorry, is with those Dallas Texans in 61. December 2nd, 1958, the 24th Heisman Trophy Award was won by Army halfback number 24, Pete Dawkins. 1963 is a year on the 2nd of December, and we had the 1964 NFL Draft. The first pick was Dave Parks, number 81 at Texas Tech by the San Francisco 49ers. December 2nd, 1969, two years after doubling its size from six teams to 12, the National Hockey League announced that two more teams would be added in joining the league the following year, 1970 season. And those two teams were ones we would recognize today, the Buffalo Sabres and the Vancouver Canucks. December 2nd, 1978, the Sporting News announced that Baltimore Orioles shortstop number seven, Mark Bellinger was the first winner of his eighth and final Major League Baseball Gold Glove Award. December 2nd, 1981, pitcher Fernando Valenzuela, number 34 of, of the Dodgers, became the third consecutive Dodger player to be named as a National League Rookie of the Year. Quite a streak for them. They were drafting quite well. Number 43, Rick Sutcliffe was in 1979. Steve Howe was 1980. He wore number 57. And of course, uh, Valenzuela in 1981. December 2nd, 1984, Miami Golf Dolphins quarterback number 13, Dan Marino, broke the NFL single season touchdown passing record when he threw his 37th completion in a Dolphins 45 to 34 loss to the Raiders. He ended up finishing the season with 48 touchdown passes that was later surpassed by one Mr. Peyton Manning. Now, December 2nd, 1987, the 334 Club forms as 334 Brave Devil fans journey through 20 inches of snow to attend a New Jersey Devils 7-5 NHL victory over the Calgary Flames at the Meadowlands. Now, it's hard to believe in 1987 that they would not cancel uh, a, a National League hockey game get the players there safely and all the people that work at the stadium and only 334 fans show up. It's amazing that they did that, but the brave souls indeed. December 2nd, 1989, the 55th Heisman Trophy Award was won by Houston quarterback number 11, Andre Ware. December 2nd, 2008, Manchester United's Portuguese forward, number nine, Cristiano Ronaldo, won his first award as best football player in the world. Of course, we're talking soccer again. Barcelona forward, number 10, Lionel Messi, took second. And Liverpool striker, number nine, Fernando Torres, was third place on that ballot. December 2nd, 2016. For the sixth time in seven years, Cincinnati Reds first baseman, number 19, Joey Voto, wins the Tip O'Neill Award as the best Canadian Major League Baseball player. He hit 326 with the National League leading 434 on base percentage, 29 homers, and 97 ribbies. An outstanding all-around season for our last place club that the Reds took that year. And finally, December 2nd, 2019, Barcelona forward number 10, Lionel Messi, won his record sixth award from Liverpool's Dutch defender, Virgil van Dijk, the American infield, midfielder number 15. Megan Rapinoe was the Women's World Player of the Year in the game of soccer. And that is your sports break for December 2nd. Your sports history in a really, in a nutshell, talking to, you know, all these great athletes in the uniform numbers that they wore and the great events that happened then on December 2nd. Glad you could join us. Hope you join us each and every day. And until tomorrow, everybody, have a great sports history day. Sorry, but my pitching coach just called timeout and he's coming out to the mound. I think I'm going to get yanked for a reliever. We'll see you back tomorrow for some more great sports history on Sports Jersey Dispatch Podcast.
We invite you to check out our websites, jerseydispatch.com and pigskindispatch.com, not only see the daily sports history, but to experience the preservation of great events and people that play the games. Find us on Pigskin Dispatch. It's also on social media outlets of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel. Get all your daily sports history. Pigskin Dispatch is happy to be associated with the Sports History Network, the sports headquarters of yesteryear, found at sportshistorynetwork.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.